Well, 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 it's actually another day. I cut my finger pretty good on the rotor, but this tire, the Chubby from 220 Ride, man, it just went on really easy. And that's how I actually cut myself because it actually, the tubeless rim slid in and my hand just jerked. One of those freak things, you know, I don't need stitches, but it, it was bleeding pretty good. It was a gusher. And I was like, you know, I got this on. I'm done for the day. Well, taking a look at my bearings, they're frozen. So I just went online and I ordered the bearings. I use this bearing house out of Michigan called J JSB Great Bearings, I believe it's called. Look in the description, I'll have it there, but I can actually order these bearings. I got two for the rear, because there's supposedly two just in the rear and two for the front. And my total free shipping is a whopping $24. And they're, they're great bearings. You can pick the type of bearing you want. You can have a China bearing, a Japanese bearing, one made in Germany, whatever you want. If they have it, you can pick where you're getting that bearing from. You can get all different types. You can get shielded bearings, which would be for like a uh, heat environment, you know, cause you can't have the rubber on the outside. But you know, I just got a normal one that has the rubber or the, you know, the dust seal, whatever you want to call it. You can get open face bearings. Um, and you can actually buy these dust seals. Now, I don't know if they carry them because it's, I didn't see it on their site. I might call them, but I did do a quick Google search after looking at the numbers on here. And the numbers are on here are, if I can remember seeing it, uh, 35, 47, seven, which is the size of this dust oil seal. Well, they call it an oil seal. And it's a TC. Now you just type that in, took me a page on Amazon. I can buy this seal for a whopping $7, some change. I think total for two seals was like $15 and I'll have it here by next week. I'm actually gonna see if I can source these because honestly, you should be replacing the dust seal here, the oil seal all the time, really. You probably should every tire change or every couple of tire changes replacing that because your spacer sits into there and it, you know, supposed to stop dirt from going in. That's a snug fit. I have a little wear on here because of stuff, but luckily I over grease things and it's not like completely worn. So it's probably good that I went ahead and put a new tire on, even though I could have ran that other tire for quite a while. So I'm just going to slap this back together. Reason being, is I need to get it off the lift or roll it to the side. I have other things coming for this bike like brake pads and, and new swing arm plastic protection bits. And I even have an exhaust on order supposed to be uh, off back order here by the end of the month. So that is what it is. I'm also getting new reeds. I figure I'd go ahead and replace those because I have so many hours, miles on this bike. Just simple, easy stuff to do. I probably by the end of this summer will do, you know, the top end, do a piston, check that all out. But for now, new sprockets, chain. Uh, I want to do the rear bearings and I'm just going to go ahead and do the front bearings. Anyways, that's why I ordered them. I didn't get the dust seals for this know the size so you know I'll, I'll I'll not worry about that right now like I said I'm gonna try to source um, dust seals oil seals and just good quality like Japanese made bearings and I might put a packs together and sell them and sell them for less than other brands because you can pay quite a bit for all balls, pivot works, SKF. Uh, SKF was pretty cool because actually their kit comes with like this, you know, the wheel spacer, 
the dust, the dust slash oil seal, and then the bearings. So it was a complete kit. So really not that badly priced if you need all the, all these parts. And I'm gonna lube that up a little just to slide it in there because it's a little rough in there. It's a little rusty because well things weren't oh barely moving. I guess I guess it was at least barely moving. So that's good. It's so stiff though. Maybe I freed it up by playing with it. But yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna <laughs> now I can't get it in or out. So, anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. It was mainly a look at the tubeless, and I'll bring you more videos on what I'm doing with the Beta 300 RR Racing, and we'll be doing a lot of little changes to it. So, stay tuned. You all take care. Stay well, my friends. Have a good one. Bye.